This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be flying the DJI Avada with the included motion controller, which offers a completely unique experience to drone flying. Now, for those of you that owned the DJI FPV drone, you might be a little bit familiar with the motion controller here, although because it was an extra add-on accessory, I'm not sure how many people actually ended up picking this controller up. But this go-around with the Avada, it actually comes included in the box. Now, when you look at it, it doesn't look like any other drone remote controller that you've seen, and that's because you actually use your wrist to control the drone using motion. So you can bank to the left, bank to the right, you can pull the drone up, or go ahead and look downwards to kind of descend with the drone. So it really is a unique experience and it also has some buttons on the controller here so we've got the accelerator trigger so as you squeeze this the drone picks up speed you've got the tilt rocker on the left side here that kind of controls the gimbal looking up and down of course the record button to record uh, video while you're flying around you've also got this red button the lock button and this kind of acts as like the start and stop button so you double press it to arm the motors or you long press and hold to take off or long press and hold if you're in the air to land the drone the mode button just basically switches you between the normal and sport mode and we've got this big brake button that kind of acts as like a pause button so if you need to stop the drone it'll come to a stop it'll hold its position and then when you're ready to go you can press that brake button again and continue your flight this also is a return to home button so holding this down will have the drone come back to you using return to home so this remote definitely offers a unique experience to say the least you want to make sure that when you're flying with it you have a nice open area to not only take off but to land I find sometimes landing with the motion controller can be a little bit difficult now let's address the fact that this comes inside of the box. It's just this and no regular remote controller. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think that they should at least have some sort of combo that takes this out and replaces it with the FPV controller too, because let's be real, not everybody is going to want this motion controller, but the fact that it does come in the bundle, I think that now more people than ever are going to be flying using it and understand that it is actually a little bit of fun to take out and fly around and just explore with. So let's go ahead and drop the goggles down. We've got the Avada directly behind us. So I'll go ahead and double press the lock button. This arms our motors, so now they're spinning on the ground. We'll then go ahead and hold, right? Hold the lock button, press and hold. Yep, there you go. So it takes off, nice. It's gonna sit there. And now as we look around, it actually is able to be controlled with our motion, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead. We'll kind of just punch the accelerator up and out. Now I have to say, I haven't flown with this remote controller, gosh, in a couple of months with the FPV drone. Right now we're just in normal. So let's see, as we're flying straight here, we can just twist our wrist to the right and the drone banks, which is pretty cool. And then we go ahead and twist to the left and the drone banks that way. Man, the camera is just so good on this drone. So we're gonna do two flights here in this video. The first of which is kind of going to be a learning flight here. We're gonna go over some of the different moves and some of the different things we can do, and then we'll really be pushing it after that. So right now we're in the normal mode. We've got a max speed of about 18 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and hit the mode switch to bring us into sport mode. So now we've got a top speed of 30 miles an hour. And let me just say something right off of the bat here. I feel like using this controller with the FPV drone is probably a better experience because the FPV drone is like twice as fast in sport mode, whereas the top speed in this being 30 miles an hour, I mean, it does feel engaging, it does feel interesting. All right, now something I need to figure out or learn is that you just move your wrist. You don't actually move your arm. So. It's nice and easy. Cool. And then we'll pull up. So one thing I'm noticing also is that it's a little bit jerky. Like as you move from left to right, like it just feels a little bit jerky. Now I wonder if when we look at the footage, Rocksteady will even that out and make it look nice and smooth. But my first impressions flying this drone with the motion controller is that it just feels intuitive. Like I feel like I could give this controller to somebody that doesn't know how to fly a drone, and they'd be like, oh, I understand, I just got a point where I want it to go. Now also, I should have mentioned this, but the drone, or the, the uh, motion controller itself, actually has like a gyro and an IMU uh, and a compass built in, so you are gonna wanna calibrate all of those things before you fly. Let's see, how far can we pull up? Oh wow, we can pull up almost, oh yeah, so we can basically fly directly forwards, almost, let's see. Yes, yeah, so like right now our vertical speed is 13 miles an hour and we're only, no, we're not flying forwards at all. So we can look straight up and fly straight up. And look, it also shows a little graphic there, which is nice. Let's go and point all the way down now. How about that? Will it be able to show us that? Yeah, so look, do you see that? It kind of gives us an area where we're going to land, almost an augmented reality. So that's awesome. So that's going to make landing this thing much easier. Although look, my wrist is kind of all, I don't know, 
twisted up, so that's a little bit uncomfortable. But okay, let's go ahead and take it for a spin around this building over here. You know, it's funny, when the FPV drone came out and I did my very first motion controller flight ever, right? I hadn't had any experience with it before. At first, I wrote it off immediately, right out of the box. I was like, all right, this is cool. It's kind of gimmicky, right? I mean, it's going to be a cool little addition, but I'm not sure if you're going to want to purchase it. And then I flew with it, and I was like bombing around the trains. I was going down the tracks. I was going down the river, and I actually had a lot of fun with it. Now, I don't think that I'd be hitting gaps like I would be <laughs> with like, you know, a regular controller, especially not in this flight. I mean, I've got to get used to the motion controller before I go and do things like that. But this just kind of offers you a different experience, right? I mean, when you go out and you fly your drone, it gives you something else that you're able to do. Let's go ahead and try to cruise low down to the ground, tilt our wrist downwards. I'm not really using the gimbal pitch. I'm not tilting it all that much, but rather I'm just kind of looking around with it. Whoa, we're still low to the ground. <laughs> I got to pull up a little bit there. I mean, look, this again is my first motion controller flight in months. And it really does feel intuitive. It's almost like riding a bike. You just pick it right back up. But I'll tell you what, the one thing that I really wish we had here is a little bit of a faster top speed in sport mode. Now, obviously, when flying with the motion controller here, let's see, we can also slow it down by, by taking the accelerator and not squeezing it all the way down. Oof. Yeah, got to get a little bit used to it. Should we try to hit this gap here? All right, <laughs> that is our excitement for this flight, you guys. I said the first flight was gonna be an exploratory flight, and here we, exploratory flight, and here we are flying through gaps with this thing. <laughs> I think that this, that just kind of shows how intuitive this thing can be. Uh, so I think I was mentioning this before, I'm gonna bring it up again. I really do kind of wish that this drone flew a little bit faster in sport mode because then this would feel a lot more immersive. I mean, you get 60 miles an hour out of the FPV drone, right, in sport mode, which is awesome because, I mean, you could be ripping with the motion controller. But here, with this, only 30 miles an hour, I don't know, it feels a little bit slow. Especially with the motion controller, right? I mean, the motion controller is kind of like, you know, that first person view where you are, you feel like you're literally flying a helicopter because of the joystick that you have here. Also, I don't know what I look like right now. Like, I could be looking totally stupid with my arm up I got the goggles on. People are probably making fun of me. I also just cannot get over the camera of the Avada here. Just stunning. Nice and wide. And also I'll tell you what, like I've come here to fly a lot of times, this drone, the Avada, and it offers so many different areas to bob and weave through, to explore through, to kind of fly over. At first, I kind of thought it was just going to be a good GPS drone spot, but it's actually turned out to be a pretty good FPV spot as well. So the one thing that I don't have with this drone is like, or, or with this controller, I feel is precision. Now, we did split that gap. That was pretty cool. But I feel like at a moment's notice, if I need to jerk the drone to the left, it feels a little bit jerky. Now, there are like different, different settings for the remote controller in terms of like your sensitivity and things of that nature but you don't have that here in the motion controller. I mean, when you go to the settings of the motion controller, it's pretty much just to change the, uh, it's pretty much just to change like, or, or not change anything. You get a tutorial, so that's the first thing. You can re-access the tutorial, and you can also recalibrate, um, you know, all the sensors and whatnot. Let's see what I look like. Let's do a nice low pass over here. We got somebody walking up. All right, so that flight got cut a little bit short because somebody had to come up and move their car and then I had to move. But look, this gives us a really good breaking point in between our two flights to talk about this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform that I've personally been using before I even started posting videos to my YouTube channel here six years ago. I first built my portfolio using Squarespace's platform because of their templates that are stylish, functional, and easy to customize. I didn't need to learn how to code, I didn't need any previous experience, and I didn't need to spend a ridiculous amount of money to hire someone to build it from scratch. Instead, I was able to work at my own pace, add my best photographs from my computer, and customize my template exactly the way that I wanted. In my case, I have a simple design with a black background and minimal text 
to keep the focus on the images. Squarespace goes even deeper with detailed analytics so I can see who is looking at my work. They have integrated SEO tools so that I can get my website seen by more people online. And if I choose to do so, I can start an online store right within Squarespace's platform to sell prints, presets, or anything else photography related. So a special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and helping me display my work online for over half a decade. Okay, now let's jump into our second flight here. Go ahead and double press, start the motors, long press the lock button. There we are, and now we are off. You know what, let's bring the drone a little bit close to the camera here. Can we do that? Bring it up close. Leave it right there. <laughs> so now, I mean, the cool thing, right, is as you move the controller, it spins. Hopefully it's focusing properly. But yeah, man, this controller is pretty cool. Awesome, okay, all right. So, let us go ahead and rip down. Man, look at that camera. The colors just always pop. I think it's something about the greens. So we accomplished a lot more in our first flight than I expected. Honestly, I expected to just kind of fly around, but we hit some gaps. We flew near the train. We flew under the bridge. So we got a good amount completed. I know I keep complaining about it, but I kind of wish that this drone was a little bit faster in sport mode. There we are. Cool. Pull her on up. Now, one thing we didn't try in the previous flight is the brake button. So let's bring that up or let's give that a try. So let's spin around here. We'll fly up, start coming back towards our home point. So now let's say something was directly in my way. I could hit that brake button and the drone comes to a complete pause. Now, right now it is hovering. No matter how I move the motion controller here, it's not going to move the drone whatsoever, which is great because this gives us the ability to take a break if we want to. Now, if we want to resume, we just press that brake button and now we're back on and we're flying with the motion controller. Now, holding down that brake button will engage return to home. I think my RTH is set to like 120 feet, so it should just fly up a little bit. It's already facing towards the home point, goes to about 129 feet, and now it's going to come back. Now, usually I'm not a huge fan of return to home. Usually I'm somebody that flies my drone back to myself on my own. It's faster, it's easier, it's more precise. I can trust myself a little bit more than the software, but this is really good to implement uh, into using the motion controller because it is a little bit difficult to land, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. So we can go ahead and cancel this by tapping on the brake button again, pauses it, and now we're back to flying. So it's going back down the river. I'll tell you what, again, I haven't flown with the motion controller here in a while. With the FPV drone, I mean, gosh, that launched back in March of 2021. I kind of flew with it throughout the summer, winter time, I kind of fell off and I was just using the regular sticks. And now this has got to be the first time in about a year that I'm reflying with it, but it's almost like riding a bike. Like you just pick it right up and just keep going. It does feel very intuitive. Um, also something to kind of bring up is that you're able to, you know, really appeal to a different type of market here of people that could potentially be disabled and they aren't able to use their uh, you know, fingers to fly the drone. So this opens up a new experience for certain people that could potentially be disabled and otherwise wouldn't be able to fly the drone, which is really awesome. Now, the way that you know the, uh, the camera is simulating flying up and down is the gimbal is just pitching up. So the gimbal pitches up and the drone flies upwards. Again, we're only flying like in the GPS mode here. This is not, this is not uh, manual mode. We'll do one more little surf down the train here and then we'll pretty much call it a video. We've showed off a lot of what this motion controller can do. Uh, I guess kind of in these closing minutes, let me give my final remarks here. So regarding the motion controller, I think it's a lot of fun, but I think that it should have stayed as an add-on. I don't think that they should have made this, you know, as something that comes with the drone and you can't bundle it without the regular controller. Because in my opinion, most people are going to want to fly with that controller and not fly using the motion controller. I think that this is a great add-on. I think that people will enjoy flying with it. Right now, I'm getting a little bit too confident. And you can kind of get close up to stuff because it does feel pretty comfortable. I mean, by now, I feel like I could almost, you know, hit gaps, even though I was doing that in the beginning. I think it's kind of a mixture of using the motion controller and my goggles that gives me a lot of confidence in order to fly like this. Uh, you know, I don't think that you'd get this same experience if using the motion controller with like an Air 2S or a Mavic 3. It's just very different. The FPV drone, the FPV drone and the Avada here fly very differently. So yeah, I'm kind of bummed that they are only including this in their bundles with the goggles. I would much rather see them give you the option to bundle this or the FPV controller and not just have to choose the motion controller. 
which is kind of a shame. But I think it is going to get a lot more people flying with this, and they will understand that, hey, this is pretty fun. So let's go ahead and do a mock landing here. So the way that we land, as we kind of bring it up and above, we bring ourselves to a stop, totally come off the accelerator, and then we'll look all the way down, and we'll almost put this circle directly on that button, directly on the down arrow, and then hold the accelerator. Now we're coming down. The drone knows that we want to land. It'll come slowly down, use its sensors. But look, do you see how awkward this feels? And also it's like not landing properly. So I think now what you've got to do to force the land is hold the lock button. Yeah, so now it's forcing a land. At least I think. Auto landing in progress. <laughs> there we are. Oh, so I think I had to double press it maybe. Look, regardless. Motion controller is fun. It's definitely a different experience. Should they have shipped it in the box? Yeah, sure, why not? But give us the option to also bundle it with our uh, traditional remote controller because I think that this is a great add-on, but I think that this is just kind of for when you get bored of using the regular mode and you want a different experience. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this first flight here with the motion controller on the Avada. If you've got any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. I've got a feeling that many more people will be flying with this because it's now bundled in, so it should be pretty cool to see what people think. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.